Welcome you all once again to this Abacus Python YouTube channel. This is the Abacus Python scripting learn with the concept lecture series. And in the last lecture, that is lecture number eight, we have seen how to create the ODB. And in this lecture, we will see how to write the data to that ODB and we can visualize the data as a contour. And if you have not watched the previous video, I'll provide the link in the i button. Please go and watch that video first. Before starting today's discussion, one announcement. I'm sharing all the files that are used in this lecture series. I'm sharing via GitHub. So for each video, I have created a link and that link I have shared in the description of the video. So please go, go through the files and learn more. So the file includes all the Python script, the uh, any data file or the ODB file and the presentation as well. So for this video, I have saved the data in this link in of the GitHub. So please go through this file and learn more. One more thing, I have also shared the Avacus help manuals, the PDF file links as well as the online documentation link. Okay. So one last thing, if you like my content, please support this channel. So please like, share, subscribe and comment. That being said, let's start our discussion. So first we will discuss that what data you can use to create the contour. So first case could be, let's say you have some data, maybe in the text file or maybe the data can be the output of your analytical method. And you want to visualize that data as a contour. So in that case, first you need to create the ODB. And in that ODB, you can write this data and you can visualize this data as a contour. Okay. So to create the ODB, you can refer my previous video that is lecture number eight on how to create the ODB. And further, you can write this data to visualize the contour. Cool, right? Visualizing the data as a color contour, right? It's, it will be very intuitive when you see the color maps, right? So the next case, so let's say you have an ODB file and the results in the ODB files are usually not enough. So what you want to do is you want to post process the existing contour results data and get the meaningful or understandable contour results. So for example, let's say you have displacement in X direction and displacement in Y direction and you want to calculate this sum of it. This is just a simplified version. Maybe you may not use it, but this is just an example. So here you need to use this already existing contour and post process it. So here you are creating a new contour that is let's say u1 plus u2 right. So basically you are post processing the already existing field outputs. Doing these kind of manipulation in the Abacus Python it is super easy. We have separate commands for it and it is tremendously easier actually. So this will be much easier than the previous case. Okay. So some other example or the realistic examples could be that let's say you have the stress strain data from your analysis for that model and you want to calculate the fatigue life or fatigue damage. So basically you can post process stress strain data and get the fatigue life or the fatigue damage. Right. Okay. So that's enough theory for now and let's write some code. So this is the script I have already used in the lecture eight. So this is the script we have created in lecture eight where we created the ODB and you can find the, the script in the description of a previous video. So please go and download it. And if you have not watched the video, please go and watch it again. So I'll add the code to the same script because then it will be a complete script. So first we need to open this ODB in the write mode. So uh, because we are going to write the data to the sub ODB or the ODB here, we need to open it in the write mode because we want to write the data. So in order to do that, we need to use something called as read only false. So by default, it will be a true. So we need to exclusively write it as false. Okay. And here we are going to write the field data, right? So we need as you know, field data is available at the frames and the frames are available in the step. So first we need to create a step, then we need to create a frame and in that frame we can create the field output and there we will write the data. So here I am creating a step object. So to create a step object, uh, we will write sub ODB dot step. So this is the method we will use uh, to create this step. And the inputs required as the name, name of the step, then the description, whatever the description you want to write, then what is the domain? It is a time domain or model frequency, something like that. 
and then the time period. So what is the total time period for this step? So let's write 1.0. And then in the this step object, we need to create a frame. So let's write step dot frame. So this is the method we will use to create a frame. So two inputs are required. One is the increment number and the next one is frame value. So here just for example, we are creating, so just write 0, 0.0. Now we have created a frame object now. In this frame object, let's create a field output, okay? So we'll write a frame object dot field output and the inputs required are the name. So what is the name you want to see when the contour will be shown to you? So that name and it, sh it must be unique. So let's write U max. So some data I'm writing here, uh, description and uh, what is the type? So what type, what is the type of this field output is going to be? Is it a scalar, vector, uh, tensor, a full tensor, something like that. There are various types we can write the data for. Then for this type, what components label you want to write? So because this is a vector, I want three components, u1, u2, and u3, each defining the direction. And apart from that, you can ask one more thing from the applicants that calculate the magnitude for these components, okay? So this information we can write, okay? Now we have created field output object. Now we will write the data to this field output. Okay. So here I'm reading the data from this uh, disp.dat file. So this is the data file I have. So here I have node label, then the corresponding u and u, u2, u3 values. Okay. And from this file, I'm reading this data and segregating the node labels and uh, the respective u1, u2, u3 data. Okay. So for this field object, now I'll use a dot dat method to write the data, okay? Now the f there are three different inputs are required in this. So first is the position. So at what position I want to write the data? Because usually we write the displacement data at the nodes, so it is a nodal. But if it is a tensor, that means it, if it is a stress or strain data, then the data you may have at the integration points or the elemental nodal or the centroid of that element, okay? So in that case, you can write these inputs as per your need. So first input is the position. The second input is at what labels you want to write the data. So because as I said, this is a nodal, hence I'll use, I'll provide the labels uh, argument, the value of all the node numbers or the node labels. And this we have to put it in the tuple format. And then the another input related to this node numbers is required is, I need to give the information that these nodes belongs to which instance. So for the instance argument, I will give the instance object. So I know because I have extracted the data, I know that these node labels belongs to this instance, Bush instance. So I'll create an instance object and then I'll pass it here. This is about the node information. Then the third input, and this is the important input is data. So what are the data for this node levels and for this position. So here, as I'm writing a vector value, so for each node labels, so for each node, I must give three values. So just for example, I just have written this array so you can see this is a one big array and inside this for each value I'm giving a, a list of three values, okay? So each correspond to the first one will be returned to the U1, second will be returned to the U2 and third one will be returned to U3. And this all three values belongs to the first node level that we are specifying in this list and so on, okay? Now this is the first, first case where we have the data from the text file or some numbers or for, from some calculation we are getting this data and we are writing to the sub ODB or the ODB. So this is the first case, right? Analytical data if you want to write, you, then you can use something like this method. Then the next one I told you about post-processing the already existing field outputs, okay? 
So to write that field output, let me create another field object, field output. Uh, just uh, I'm giving a name as u new, and uh, the description is uh, something uh, displacement addition, and the type here I'm writing is a scalar scalar quantity I want to write. I want to create a u1 u, u1 plus u2, so that will be a scalar I want to write. Okay. So here I have created one field object based on that. Okay, because this is a scalar, there will be no components because it's a scalar value, and obviously there will be no invariance as well. Okay, so now I need to get the data to write it. So first, I have created this U max field output. Right here, I have created a field output which is a U max, and which has three components: U1, U2, U3. So what I will do is I'll take U1 and U2 and then sum it up. So First, I'll get the frame, and that frame, I'll access the U max field output, and then I'll use the method called as get scalar field. So it will give me a, a, a invariant or component. So in this case, as I want component, I'll write component label as U1. So this entire method will give me the U1 value for all the model. Similarly, I'll get the u2 as well. So just instead of u1, I'll write component labels equals to u2. So now I have the field output objects, right? These are the objects, right? Now I'll just you sum them up using just the plus up arithmetics. So now you can see I am I'm calculating the sum of u1 plus u2 for an entire model and just I have to write just u1 plus u2. How simple it is, right? So that why I, that's why I said writing this kind of information, it is much easier than the first one. So now I have created one new variable u new and which represents the u1 plus u2. And then I'll for this field output object for this field output object, I'll use the same add data method, but here because I have already a field output object itself, that field output object I'll give as an argument to this field. Okay, so from this you can see the all the other inputs, the position, the values, or the label, node label, all are taken care of because this this is a field output object. So it is very simple to write these kind of outputs and. Hence, it is. Uh, hence, the post processing will be very easy, right? Okay. So we have written case one as well as case two, right? So let me save this and run the script. So file run. So because we have already run, uh, written the script previously, so we we have run the same script again, so it will create a sub ODB and, and it will create a field output and write the data to it. Okay, so at the end I have written this statement and it means that the calculation is completed. Script is running is completed. So let me open this sub ODB. So this is the sub ODB we have created. Now what I have done is I have just uh, written the data just at the inner part. So you can write the data something like this also. You don't need to write the data everywhere, wherever you want, wherever the specific area of interest is. At that position only, you can write the data. So here you can see U max. You can see this is the two field outputs we have created, U max and U1. And this is the U max I am currently able to see. And here you can see it is showing me U1, U2, U3, and along with the magnitude as well. Okay. And if you go to the u new, then you will see that it's a scalar quantity. That's why there are no labels to it, and you can still see the contour. Okay. So I hope this is clear to you, and that's all from this lecture. And in the next lecture, we will come up with the, some new topic. And if you want to suggest any new topic that you want a video on, please comment for that. So stay safe, be hungry to learn, see you, bye and tada.